Hey, hey, welcome to the Lifestyle Creation Podcast, designing life on your terms. I'm your host, Jamie Thurber, and I'm an expert operations manager, productivity queen, mindset, business, and lifestyle coach. Basically, getting shit done is my jam. And I believe in the power of intentional living and in real conversations that can shift your perspective, create habits, and ultimately achieve the freedom that you want in every area of your life. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the podcast. I am recording from my hotel hustle room. (laughs) That's what I called it. I'm recording a video uh, on and off some behind the scenes things today. I decided randomly as I woke up this morning and I am referring to it as the hotel hustle. So that's what we're going to call this. Just kidding. (laughs) I have a different title in mind, but I'm coming at you from a hotel in Hillsboro, Oregon, which is outside of Portland. So I've been here several times, actually. I was just here three months ago to visit with a client and um, back here now and got extended to stay for an extra week. So by the time it's all said and done, I will be here for 14 whole days, which is was not the original plan, but which is crazy and awesome all at the same time. And what it's prompted me to talk about with you is the ways that I make travel successful because I'm not going to lie the majority of my clients and friends but specifically clients every time they go out of town on vacation they come back and it takes them quite a while to get back into the groove meaning maybe they get sick they don't feel good they're overly exhausted there are all of these things and it takes a while for them to get back to normal and therefore it's almost also like they're starting over on all of their routines like their morning routines and you know journaling and meditation and eating well and what they like to do you know your normal day-to-day things that make you function at your top um like your optimal version of yourself those things fall to the wayside when they're traveling And it does for most people. It used to do that for me as well. And it's funny, stick with me on this, because I know that when I say some of these things, people are like, "Uh, do you ever have any fun? And it's like, "Uh, yeah, actually, I have a ton of fun all the time. My whole life is fun for the most part, because I make it that way. But anyway, my whole point of this conversation is to explain to you some tips and things that you can do that will help you stay on routine or stay on track while you're traveling and not at home in your normal day-to-day routine so that when you come back from vacation, you don't need a vacation from your vacation, right? Now, granted, if you're running around and you're on a really like adventure-filled trip, you still may need that, right? A couple days to get back to physically, you know, feeling in, in the zone or whatever. But the truth is, is that that may happen regardless, but it doesn't have to be such a huge adjustment each time. Like I said, like there's one thing to build a freedom-based life, right? Where you can do whatever you need to do whenever you need to do it. There's one thing to build that, but there's one thing to build it in a way that's not sustainable, um, which I talk a lot about here in the podcast. But in this particular fashion, because I used to do it too, people are jet-setting all over the country like they're Gary V and not taking care of themselves and then wondering why they have burnout, why they can't stay focused, why they wind up sick each time they travel and all of those things. And the truth is, is because like in order to really have a freedom-based lifestyle, you have to have strict routines. I don't know anyone who has a quote unquote freedom-based lifestyle that doesn't have solid routines that they do no matter where they are. And I have friends across the country that I've stayed with or been around or have traveled with me that can tell you that I do the same things when I'm gone as I do when I'm home. Um, And I've just taken it to a a much more extreme level, actually, because of my health, which some of you know the story. If you don't, there's another podcast episode called The Life Sentence that you can look up. It's I'll link it below. And so anyway, like out of necessity to continue to be able to travel and not be physically ill because my body doesn't respond well to flying, like I can drive anywhere and be good to go. But there's an adjustment period uh, for flying in one of the ways, especially because I tend to overly exert myself in general. <laughs> so in order to not have to hold back from doing things I enjoy, 
I have to stay really true to some specific things in my routine. And this is the part that I was going to say most people think is boring, but it's, I mean, it's super not. So just stay tuned with me here. Because I'd love for people to understand that in order to have this like freedom-based life and how to be able to do whatever you need to whenever you need to do it, it takes a lot of conditioning in my opinion and in my in my situation. So I'll give you a couple of examples. So in the past, if I would have been told, like we made the decision for me to extend my trip the day before I was leaving. Like I was leaving with less than 24 hours later and you know, there was just the opportunity. One of the things I've been focusing a ton on is being open to any and all opportunities and possibilities and not keeping myself pigeonholed as far as what's possible and how. And so there's probably a time years ago that I wouldn't even have suggested to my client that I stay another week and could help in the fashion that I am. And the truth of the matter is it's the best thing I could have suggested for him. It saves him and I both time and money and I won't be able to be here again until later in the year. And so therefore, you know, we can just kind of kill all the birds with one stone while I'm here. That's a horrible saying, by the way. We don't want to kill any birds with stones. Like that's a really horrible thing. But anyway, I guess there was a time in life that they had to kill food with stones. Anyways, (laughs) I digress. There was a time that I wouldn't even have suggested it because in my head that was like everything in my body would have told me that it was bad, that I was going to get sick, that I was going to be overly exhausted, that it wasn't smart for me to stay. When the truth is, is it's actually smarter for me to stay than it is for me to go. Like (laughs) I'm in a great routine. I feel physically well. And the longer I'm here, the longer that's the case before I get on an airplane again, which could potentially you know, throw me for a loop or whatever, but that's a whole nother story for another day. But the way that I make sure that I don't have the neglect to to my own personal fucking needs, like that's what it comes down to. Like, oh, I'm on vacation, so I'm not going to take care of myself at all. Oh, that's a great idea. Like what kind of flipping vacation is that? Where you think that like I'm on vacation, so I'm not going to do any of the things that I know make me feel well, think well, and be the best version of myself. Like, why would you cut those things out ever? Like, if you think about it, it doesn't make sense if you really think about it. Also, if you're living your life in a way that you enjoy and it's not all like a drill sergeant or like a miserable experience, then it's really not a huge deal to continue on your journey or on your routine while you're out of town. Honestly, my morning routines when I'm not at home are my or some of my favorites. Like, think about, I remember being on vacation with my family at Gulf Shores, Alabama. It's like a St. Louis thing for some reason. Everybody from St. Louis goes to Gulf Shores or Myrtle Beach. Those are like the two weird vacation spots. Like, every, like I get down there, swear to God, in Alabama, every fucking car had a Missouri license plate on it. No joke. At where we were staying on the beach. It was so funny. Anyway. So I remember being down there with my parents, my brother and his wife and kids, and Tony met us down there at one point. And I, did I limit the amount of work I was doing? Yes. At that time where my business was, I was not canceling a week's worth of work in order for me to go on vacation. Like it just wasn't, I wasn't prepared to do that at the time. And so anyway, I would do like, I think I had to work like three days for like two or three hours each of those days. But either way, I woke up in the morning and did my morning routine. I didn't wake up at the same time. I woke up a little bit later, um, but I got up and did my morning routine when I did it beachside. I did it watching the waves beat on to the sand. Like I did that and it was amazing. Some of my best journaling came through that. One of the articles that I have that was published in uh, the Goodman Project magazine, I wrote on the back porch of that place. Um, It's an article about my dad. I'll link it below if you want to read it. It's actually really cool. It is like, I find even more magic and more fulfilling enjoyment when I do those routines in different places because it's stuff that I know makes me feel well and puts me in a really great mental and physical space. And so doing it in a beautiful or different environment it always feels really nice. Like even here in a hotel room, it feels nice to get up and do my morning routine. It felt, it feels nice for me to have, 
you know, rearrange the way the nightstand looks so that my journal and my book are sitting there really pretty. I have a candle with me. You know, I have my essential oil that I put on in the morning for grounding and it's beautiful. Like I set the stage for myself in places that I go. I set the stage so that I feel and I'm honoring what I know I want and desire and need. All of those things. Not only do I need, but I want and that I know serve me really well. And so same thing happened when I was in Hawaii. So I had the uh, opportunity to spend two weeks in Hawaii a few years ago. I guess it was like four years ago, maybe. Something like that. And I did the same thing. Every morning I got up and did my morning routine. I did work in the mornings while I was there. But same thing happened with the journaling, the grounding, the coffee, the meditation. And then I added an extra cool little piece to it. And I did my morning meditation standing on these rocks of this lagoon with the ocean power pounding on these rocks. Like, talk about an amazing experience. There's a video somewhere of this. Like, I've talked about this a lot. It's, these are choices. And they're beautiful experiences to add into your mix. And for some reason, somewhere, the world told us that we had to hate our regular lives, that we had to hate our regular day-to-day activities, and so we needed vacation from them. And it's like, what if instead traveling was something that enriched us? What if instead traveling, I mean, that's what it's supposed to be. Going and visiting new places and doing new things is supposed to enrich your lives. Going to experience new things is supposed to enrich your life. It's not supposed to be like, let me say no to anything that I know I need. And you know what I mean? Like, it's not supposed to be like, oh my gosh, my life is so shitty and horrible that, you know, I hate that I have to wake up and read my book or I hate that I have to wake up and stretch. Like, what? If that's where you're at, you're doing it wrong. If that's where you're at, please go backwards and listen to some of these other episodes about morning routines and changing your mindset and perspective shifts because we don't need to be in a place where we hate our lives. That is not the the situation. And I think even a lot of you listeners that I know are not in that headspace anymore. Like you're not in a headspace where everyone else is of of needing a vacation from your day-to-day life and like hating your day-to-day life. I know that sometimes those old stories, though, remain in places that we don't realize. And so that is, you know, an example is, oh, my God, I love my day to day life and I do everything I need to set myself up for success. And I feel amazing and I serve and honor my own needs. And this is how I live. But then we go on vacation or we go out of town, even for a business trip, we go out of town and we like everything goes to the wayside. All of those routines go to the wayside as if it is that the old belief pattern of I need a way for my life. This is all shitty and horrible. Who wants to do this when they're out of town? And it's like, we don't even realize we do it. So instead, I encourage you to think about this. I encourage you to book your stay accordingly. I encourage you to put your mindset into a place. Do I mean that if you normally wake up at 7 a.m. or 6 a.m. for work that you need to wake up at 6 a.m. while you're traveling? No. But does that matter what time you wake up if you still follow your routine that you need? It doesn't matter what time you wake up. You still do it. It sets the stage for the day. It makes you feel better. And then it sets the stage for the fact that when you come back, you didn't skip a fucking beat. That's the biggest part. You didn't skip a beat mentally and emotionally. That's a huge part that we can set ourselves up for success on. So another thing to think about is when you're booking a room a hotel or an Airbnb, think about what you're wanting to do while you're there. Think about the situation. Think about the locations. Like I pick very, very specific places that have very specific things. Like I need a full kitchen. I need a certain size bed. I need, you know, dude, if I can find a place with a big soaking tub, I'm in. Like that would be amazing. But I choose it accordingly. So for example, I spent a lot of time in Connecticut or up in New England with my coach And when I go visit her, I specifically choose a place that feels peaceful and quiet because I know the work that we do is so intense that I'm going to want a place that's peaceful and quiet. I also have chosen places that are in or near nature. So the last one that I stayed in was this like um, building that was made in or built in 1903 or something like that. And it was like straight out the window was the river. You know, I'm going up there in a few weeks and same thing. I'm in this little cottage. 
but it's also only 15, like between five to 15 minutes away from where I meet with her. Because I meet with her several days in a row. And I know that I don't want to be driving a long distance. That doesn't make sense to me. And then when I'm there, here's the next step. When I'm there, I'm in a place that has a full kitchen and all the needs that I need in a room. And I also go grocery shopping as soon as I get anywhere or I Instacart something as soon as I get anywhere. If I have a rental car, I'll go to the store myself. But if I don't, like on this trip, I don't ever get a rental car when I'm here for, for this client because I stay in this beautiful place right next to the shop. And it's like a studio apartment and it's perfect. It is everything that I need. And I Instacart my groceries to myself. I do it. That's the first thing I do as soon as I get where I'm going. It's, I usually also order food like a dinner that's already made at the same time. Um, my dinner usually arrives pr- before my food. My groceries, I mean. And so I get my groceries. I look at what I think about what I want, how many days I'm going to be here, what I'm going to be doing. And what that allows me to do is make sure that I have things that make sense to have for breakfast. Uh, Things that I know that I want and need. Like I drink bulletproof coffee every morning. And I've done that for like six years, five or six years. And so I know that I need stick butter and coffee and the soy creamer that I like. And I need those things so that I can fill fill that space that my body is used to having in the morning. My body is used to having that dose of fat and caffeine together in the mornings. It just is. And so I get what I need for that. And I plan accordingly for what I want to eat throughout the day, what I want to have for lunch, what I, you know, have options for dinner. I probably honestly eat better when I'm out of town than I do when I'm home because I'm so much more intentional about it because I don't want to fall off track. It's easy to get into a groove when you're home. And when you're just on vacation for a small amount of time or out of town for a small amount of time, it's a lot easier to stay on track. And so because of that, I feel amazing while I'm gone. And I feel fine when I get back. I'm tired, like I'm jet lagged. I'm always jet lagged for at least like a day or two of where I'm just tired. But I've gotten to such a place where I allow myself to stay in routine that I don't feel like shit in every other fashion. I don't not skip I don't skip a beat of getting back into what I need to do for work and what needs to happen for this and all of that stuff stays the same. I leave space just in case I don't feel well. But it's gotten to a place now that I keep myself fairly in the same routine, pretty close, and it works. And because of that, I really do have freedom. I'm not just talking about it. I'm not a slave to the to anything. That's why I was able to say, okay, client, I'll stay for another eight days. Or was it seven days? Something like that. And then I was able to, to literally maneuver five things and I was good to go. Like I had to change a couple of appointments around because they were stuff I needed to do in person. A couple of phone calls about that. I needed to get some more clothes, so I Amazoned myself some clothes to the hotel. I got some Tide Pods from my client's wife so I could do a little laundry here and ordered some more groceries and then spoke to the people at home. So I got my, you know, everybody in line to take care of the plants and the stuff at my apartment and as well as the dogs, right? And I remember sitting, like just a couple days ago, I sat around and I was like, well, that was actually really easy. Like I, it was very easy. It cost me $90 to change my flight and just a conversation with the people downstairs to change my reservation, right? And so because of this approach and because of staying in the routine, it allows me to continue being fine and, you know, continue functioning the way that I need to. And what's funny is this is all really relaxing, you guys. Like, it's been a very relaxing trip. It's been rejuvenating, honestly, even though I've been working the whole time. Staying in a routine and being in a new atmosphere, it's been rejuvenating. And because of this, it allows me to travel like this. It allows me to be away for a while. And it allows me to do that without coming home and having to start over. Because when I don't do this, I have to start over. And we do that to ourselves enough, right? We do that to ourselves enough where we fall off routine or we fall off of what we know we need to be doing or want to be doing as far as like personal habits go. We fall off that shit regularly. Like it happens because we're humans and that happens. So why would we set ourselves up for that? Like, oh, I'm going to go have this relaxing and great adventure or this trip and, you know, accomplish these great things and then come home 
and have to beat myself up to get back into routine. Because that's what we do. Like I said, I've seen it happen too many times with friends and clients, and I just thought it would be worth a conversation to share a little bit about those things that I do. And it has a lot to do with choosing flight times according to what works best for me. Um, So I'm not rushing or feeling um, anxious about anything. I make sure that there's plenty of time for me to get up and do what I need to do in the morning, you know, vice versa, those types of situations. Um, I also always look for a flight that's the least amount of travel time that I can have. Unfortunately, several years ago, St. Louis is no longer a hub as an airport, and so there's very few places that you can go fly direct to anymore, and so you're always having a connecting flight, and so I always pay attention to the flight plan with the least amount of travel time, so it's easier on my body and easier for me to stay in routine. I choose my place that I'm going to stay according to what my needs are. And it ha- you just have to take the time to give a shit about what you need and honor your own rhythms and your own patterns and what you need. And know that that's equally as important when you're gone, if not more important when you're away from home as it is when you're home. We don't want to keep having to circle back around and jump back on the wagon that we've knocked our, ourselves off of all the time. That's an ugly, stupid cycle to be on. So the more that we can prevent us from falling off of that wagon and having to climb back on, the better. And I want everybody who listens to this to consistently set themselves up for success and consistently continue to be as proactive as they can and as preventative as they can in their mindset, their health, their businesses, their finances, and everything in between. Because that is really where the magic happens. Like That's where the freedom exists. Like I have so much freedom because I have such structured and amazing systems that are in place that I it's okay like I'm able to know that I can for example I can record this podcast spend an hour working on this and I know that the rest of it's going to be handled and it's going to be out where it needs to go because I have systems in place for that I know that I can write things and put them on social media and because I have a system in place and an amazing team and an amazing team I'm saying my system and my team I know that it's going to be produced and repurposed and put in 16 different places so that everyone has an opportunity to read it. I, you know what I mean? Like, I've set those systems up for myself though. And because of that, I'm able to have the freedom. Because I trust those and put them in place and pay attention to them when they need it, I'm able to have the freedom of stepping away from my computer and my phone for quite a while if I need to. Because I have boundaries with the, my clients and provide them with what they need and then they know when and, when and how they can speak to me you know, those timeframes, things like that. Like, so if you really want to create freedom, like actual freedom and ability to do what you need to do, you have to have the other stuff in place and it has to be priority. You have to honor what you need and what's important to be preventative as much as you can. Because then when a fire happens, you're prepared. It's not the end of the world. It doesn't knock you on your ass and keep you down there because you've done the other things to be prepared for whatever it is that can come your fucking way which has literally always been my, my methodology. And just now it's, it's so much more on a personal level and on a health-based well, or wellness-based level so that we're able to really not only have everything we want, but do it in a way that feels, really feels balanced. You know, Because then when you do have the days that you're on the phone for eight hours or you're you know, fixing something because a domain messed up or whatever happened and you're literally just having to deal with a bunch of shit for way longer hours than you ever wanted to and just be the CEO, right? Sometimes you've got to be the CEO and you got to deal with things. And when those days happen, because of all the other things that are in place, they don't suck. It just comes with the territory. And they don't have to happen every day. They happen way less frequently when you start to treat your life with the intention of everything I've been talking about this whole episode. So yes, it's a, I was talking about the whole hotel room hustle, right? And what to do to keep yourself on track and from needing such a recovery when you get back from a vacation or a business trip. But the truth is everything that I talked about, if you do it every day and no matter where you are and what you're doing, it sets you up for that success everywhere. So... As always, you guys, thank you so much for being here and for listening and tuning in. It means the world to me. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with somebody that you think would benefit from it. If you do share on social media, make sure you tag us. We really love to see that. It means makes me very happy. So (laughs) thank you for those of you who do that. 
And if you haven't yet subscribed, make sure that you do so. As always, you guys, just uh, so much love to you, so much love to you, and until next time.